What's up guys, I'm Nick of Camp Crunch, and in this Lightroom tutorial, we are going to discuss the basic panel in the develop module of Lightroom. Now, if you want to see our other Lightroom tutorials, you can go ahead and go to campcrunch.com slash Lightroom, where we will have a library of videos and other posts that you can view to learn more about the different functions of Lightroom. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. So the basic module is sort of the first thing that you see when you enter the develop uh, section of Lightroom. And this is where most of the most used settings are. And Lightroom has built this so that you can basically move downwards through the settings uh, in chronological order. You can you know, do your own way, but it's built so that you can just move downwards and you can adjust the settings like that. And again, this is where most of the most used settings are. On the top of the develop module or the basic uh, panel in the develop module, you have your treatment which you can change between color and black and white, and that's pretty self-explanatory. If you're going to do a black and white image, you click black and white, it will remove some of the settings like vibrance and saturation, and it changes some of the settings down the line like HSL and color. You don't have access to that. You have access to the black and white uh, setting, but that's going to be uh, for another video. But for demonstration purposes, we are going to do the color uh, because you can see a lot more of the settings that are being altered uh, through the color. The next thing that you get is white balance. And again, you know, it's chronological order. So this is usually the first thing that I um, adjust. Now what you can do is change your white balance based on, you know, certain, certain presets and settings like flash, if you're gonna use flash, as shot, which is basically how your camera shot it and what's in your metadata. You can leave it to auto and make the program sort of determine what the correct white balance should be, daylight, uh, cloudy, um, and all of these presets. But I don't usually, you know, change the preset here unless I leave it at as shot, unless I'm doing something specific, like I know that I use flash and I want that light to be there. But what I usually do instead is I use the second tool, which you can use, and that is the sort of white balance picker. So you click the white balance picker and you can see that you get the sort of the water dropper water picker and then you can find a neutral gray that should be in the image and in this image I don't really know where there's a really neutral gray so I'm going to pick the thing close to it and I think it's here up in the clouds this sort of darker area where there are rain clouds you can click that and it will adjust the white balance for you now I think it's a little bit on the warm side but again that's fine if you have a neutral gray in your image then choose that neutral gray and then it's going to adjust the white balance uh, for you now the third thing that you can do is you can actually use the sliders that are given now based on these different settings it will actually change the color temperature and the tint of your image but you can adjust that uh, manually if you want to so you can adjust the temperature which lies between sort of blue and yellow and it shows you the temperature value here on the right. So you, if you know what temperature the light that you shot in was, you can basically adjust it to the temperature that you shot in uh, manually through here, or you can sort of slide it until you reach your desired temperature. And you have the tint, which compensates for shifts in magenta and green. Uh, so that just balances out. And you know, the temperature and the tint, they're built so that they can compensate any lighting situation, whether it's sunset, sunrise, um, fluorescent lights and all different lighting situations you can adjust that through the temp and the tint now I don't usually use these sliders unless I purposely want to warm the image up like this uh, but instead I just use usually use the color picker and it usually does the job just fine otherwise I'll use as shot or you know maybe one of these settings again if I know what setting I'm going to use so that's the first setting that you get in the, the basic panel the second thing that you get is the exposure controls of the image. And here you can see I can click auto and it will adjust the settings for me based on what it thinks uh, it should do. But we're not going to do that today so that you know I can show you what each of these settings do. Now if you haven't watched the video on the histogram, um, be sure to watch that after because the histogram does help in determining exposure. It's not the end all be all, but it is a great tool to help. So exposure up here basically increases or decreases 
the exposure in a linear fashion. So it's going to increase the exposure of everything or decrease the exposure of everything. You can see that if I hover over this, it sort of hovers over the middle section and you can also adjust it by grabbing the middle section. But as you can see, it's bringing all of the tones up and then it's bringing all of the tones down and it's doing it again in a linear fashion. Contrast basically separates the highlights and the shadows. It makes the difference between the highlights and the shadows bigger. So that means there's going to be more darker areas and more lighter areas and less tones in the middle. And you can see that with the histogram. If I increase the contrast, you can see it sort of separating out into the highlights and to the shadows. And if I bring it in, it brings them closer to the middle, making it more sort of a grayish flat look. And that's what contrast does. So if you want to have more punch, then you want to increase that contrast to give separations from the highlights and the shadows. And if you want it to be a sort of flatter look, then you can decrease that contrast so that you get a more uh, gray, flat look with a lot of middle tones rather than highlights and shadows. If you look here on the highlights, you can see that it highlights this top section over here, not the topmost, not the highest most section, but sort of before that. And that's basically the section that it's adjusting. It's sort of adjusting the, the brighter tones, but not the brightest tones. Same with the shadows, but in the opposite side. And then the whites adjust the brightest most parts of the image, and then the blacks adjust the blackest, the darkest most parts of the image. And you can see that when I'm dragging the highlights, you can see it's sort of moving that top section up but it's not moving any of the other sections on the histogram. Now on the shadows, same thing. It's just moving the shadow areas and not really touching the rest of the image. Now if you talk about the whites, it's dragging the very topmost part of the histogram uh, first and then it's sort of pulling the rest in and then the blacks does the same thing. You can drag that and it's pulling the black areas black. And here, if you move it the other way, of course, it moves the opposite way and brings it brighter. So that's what the highlights, shadows, uh, whites, and blacks do. Now, if you want to create um, very high contrast in your image, you can sort of, um, you know, separate these yourself. So you bring the whites up and then you do the blacks down and that creates really extreme contrast. And you can also do it the other way. If you want a sort of HDR look, you can bring the highlights down so you're making them darker and then you can bring the the shadows uh, up and then you're making them brighter giving you this sort of HDR look again these are the extremes uh, the extreme uh, conditions of using these tools you can use them you know more controlled if you want to uh, but that's you know the sort of strength that this tool can do for you I'm going to reset that all now we go to we go to the presence and that's the last thing here on the basic panel and this controls uh, your clarity vibrance and saturation now clarity is a tool that I see a lot of people use very aggressively because it gives the exp the appearance of sharpening your image you'll see if I increase the clarity it sort of gives you that pop uh, sort of like a three dimensional pop uh, to your images and a lot of people use this uh, instead of sharpening or or to sharpen an image but that's not really what this this tool does clarity is sort of like contrast except contrast what it does is it separates the highlights and the shadows from each other and then it creates that extreme contrast whereas clarity it sort of creates contrast within midtones so then it gives you that extra sharpness because all of your midtones basically have more contrast within them giving the effect of more detail and that's why your image uh, looks like this when you increase the clarity now I, I advise you to use clarity very sparingly so if you're going to increase the mid-range contrast just you know do it subtly so that you don't have such an aggressive harsh looking image unless that's what you want you know like a super grungy image now in regards to lowering clarity this is something i don't do because it sort of softens the image some portrait photographers and other you know types of photographers do lower the clarity but 
this is not something that I advise you doing because it gives a sort of artificial look that I don't really think looks appealing. Now, if you want to lower the clarity in some areas, then use the brush. Maybe if you want to soften skin or something like that, but I wouldn't globally lower clarity like this because, again, it just it doesn't look that good. At least to me, your opinion might vary. Now, vibrance and saturation sort of do the same thing. Saturate. We'll start with saturation first because this is sort of like... Um, Saturation is the more extreme version of, of vibrance, or you can say that vibrance is the of the weaker version of saturation. Saturation increases the saturation level of all of the colors at a linear uh, level, so it increases them all throughout. So you can see all the colors getting more saturated as I increase it, and then as I decrease it, all of the saturation levels are going down until you get to black and white. Now with Vibrance, Vibrance does something really unique and it sort of acts like magic because it only increases the saturation levels um, of the you know colors that aren't that saturated. And if a color is very saturated already, it doesn't seem to increase the saturation of the that color too much. Like when you're adjusting skin tones or like a portrait, it handles the skin tone so nicely and I really don't know what kind of algorithm they've put in to the software to make it work like that, but it does work like magic. As you can see, if I increase the saturation, the greens are super saturated. The blue increased in saturation, but not too much. And then you get a lot of yellows here on the water with the reflections. It looks a lot more yellow. If I put that back and increase the vibrance to the max, well, I guess the level is sort of similar, but I don't know if you'll notice. You notice, but the vibrance actually handles it a lot nicer. The blues are more vibrant. I think they should be. The greens are more controlled. They don't look as poppy as the, you know, when the saturation is maxed. And although I don't really like the style of this image, I can see it as being, um, you know, sort of controlled um, use of the of more saturated colors, more than the saturation. Uh, so that's basically the basic panel of Adobe Lightroom where you will be doing most of your adjustments. If you want to learn more about the other settings in Lightroom, make sure to go to campcrunch.com slash Lightroom and that's where you can learn more about the different settings that you can use when you are using Adobe Lightroom. Again, I'm Nico of Camp Crunch and I'll see you guys in the next video.